Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are in Baghdad. Yeah. Kentucky. The Baghdad. Not Iraq. <laughs> Baghdad, <laughs> Kentucky. And uh, I'm over here with Brian Blott. Most of you guys probably recognize Brian, fellow YouTuber. Uh, has a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel? BC Block 2 There you go. Check him out. He's got some big machinery. A-bomb stuff is sissy stuff compared to what you got. That's right. We got the pro-sized equipment in this, this <laughs> shop. <so. laughs> and I am here today because uh, I had a, a, a job that was too big for me to handle, and I reached out to Brian. He said, yeah, he'd help me out with it. So let me kind of give you a quick look at this thing. This is a um, piece off of a 75-horsepower case steam traction engine that we're – I'm helping out the Florida flywheelers down in Florida. Uh, help with this. This is a, on the clutch mechanism and basically this thing idles when it's not engaged. I don't know if you can tell by looking but that front end is just worn out egg shape. So we're going to bore this thing out, put some bushings in it and kind of get it restored back out. It's got a lot of wear on one particular side. It looks like this thing probably whenever it would uh, you would disengage the clutch, it would always kind of go to the same spot, probably because of a weight in the pulley or something, and then it just wore an egg-shaped hole on one side. So to do this job, uh, Brian has this massive uh, Monarch lathe. So tell me about this Monarch lathe. It's 40 inch swing, 16 feet between centers. How much does it weigh? 44,000 pounds. Wow. Not including the chuck, yeah, <laughs> which is another thousand plus. <laughs> it's, it's, this is a massive, massive lathe. And uh, anyway, I reached out to Brian and said, hey, can we do this job on that lathe? He said, absolutely. So, uh, but part of the reason why I'm up here in Kentucky over this weekend, I had a couple places I needed to go to, uh, but mainly to get this job done right here. So we've got the chuck over in the lathe and right now we're we just got a dial indicator in here it's in a four jaw chuck and trying to get this thing running true fortunately the outside diameter there should be concentric to the inside diameter of the bore so we can just indicate off of that where are we at yeah, on that right now lose more. i don't i mean we just set it up in there yeah, i think we, it's yeah it's out a good bit right it's now it's out a quarter inch yeah <laughs> <laughs> literally we just threw it in there and so we got we got some adjusting to do but we'll get that dialed in yeah it won't take but a minute and start doing some boring so we'll be back in a minute and i'll go ahead and say thank you right now to brian for helping me out on this this is going to be a fun little project no problem all right so, we'll bring you back in a minute well we got this thing running true in here it's within about a thou or two but with all that rust and grease and stuff on there even everything else. I mean, I think we're, we're good, so. And uh, Brian's got a big boring bar set up over here, and we're gonna fire the face converter and see if we can get the thing bored out. So, what button do I push? Forward. <laughs> All right, guys, we're turning on a 50 horsepower machine here, so. There she goes. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> when it quits making noise, it's just ready. There you go. <laughs> so, see, everything's hydraulic in this headstock on here, so it's all all clutched and automatic. So, we're probably not going to turn this 375, so let's pick something a little slower. 280 probably good enough for a helicopter win. Yeah, we probably don't want to get that thing going too fast with those out of balance like it's going to be. Yeah. Got a good breeze. Yeah, we got a fan blowing now. <laughs> Just don't get your hand stuck in there. Yeah, don't get your head close to it either because it. That'd be a noggin knocker. You can see the run out there. Yeah, that's not our indicating job. No, that's, that's the inside bore. If you look on that side, it shouldn't even be moving. It's dead nuts on, so uh, but we got a good bit of material, at least on this end to take out. The other side's not as bad. It is a little oval shaped, uh, but we're going to have to take a good bit of material out of this side. All right. 
I'm gonna let you drive this thing. You know how to so, run it. <laughs> I can figure it out. It, it runs just like every other lane. I know. It's just bigger. You're used to it. <laughs> Easy. Pull in there and touch off. We're making the first pass here. Basically what we're doing is feeding out rather than in. Uh, you can hear it, it's not making a clean cut all the way around right now. We know there's some ovalness in there, but uh, that's part of what we're doing is cleaning all that up. First pass here. A lot of times you get less vibration by pulling out than going in because the bar's in tension rather than compression and makes it less prone to chatter. So, yeah. Because it's being stuck out so far, it's going to make most of the cuts pulling out instead of going in. It ought to help, and you know, we got a, that bar sticking out, what, 15 inches? Yeah, 16. 16 well, inches, and it's, I mean, that's a, what is that, a two inch diameter bar, but still, there's a lot of vibration in there, and then you even got vibration in your part here. I mean, that's sticking out a good eight inches up there. So far, so good. I don't hear a lot of chatter. I think it's going to be fine. Let's just take our time and get her done. Yep. We just started our second cut on here. We're making a 25,000 step to cut, 50,000 total on the diameter. And you can tell it's still missing out a pretty big area in there. Yeah, when, we, when we got out to the end, it was you could tell that area that's worn. It's a good, what, half inch? Yeah, it's at least that far off the boring tip. Just gonna have to go like an inch bigger on the bore diameter to clean up. Fortunately, we don't have to bore it all the way through, so we'll basically just clean the backside up until it cleans up, and then we'll just focus on a, probably about six inches deep on this front. And that way we can just press a, a bushing in each end. And the center actually, that's the way it was originally. The center was kind of hollowed out where you get oil and grease and stuff in there. And it was just supported on the ends. So that's the game plan. Moving on. Let's keep cutting. And it sounds like it's cutting pretty good. You know, I'm hearing a little bit of vibration in there every now and then, but uh, nothing I'm too worried about. Nothing that we shouldn't be able to clean up with a light pass. So. are coming out in the end you can see the uh, how far out that is in one place there it's crazy rolled around there that right there that's, yeah that's crazy I'm on quarter inch probably right now we're taking a hundred out of it Touch so far right on the side, and the other side's out a good bit too. Yeah. Got a couple places that's worn in there. But. All right. That's all right. We're going to bore it out, have it running through to the outside diameter. It really doesn't matter where it's wearing here. We're going to make it. We're going to make it right. That's the, that's the goal there in the end. So all right, that was pass number two. We're going to continue on. I probably won't bring you back for a while, but you kind of see the process here. Yep. Yeah, can't see a lot because it's way up in that hole, but. Boring can be kind of boring. So we've got the bottom end of this thing cleaned up and running true and enough material taken out of it for that bushing on, on that end. We're not gonna try to bore this thing the same size all the way through, there's just no need to. We're gonna remove too much metal, waste too much time. So we're only actually gonna bore about three inches in the very bottom of that. And again, it's just whatever diameter it ends up at. We're kind of in the finishing pass. We're probably we've got a little bit of vibration on there. We'll probably just do a blank pass, coming back in three more inches, and we're going to call it good. And then we'll work on this uh, front end and get that cleaned up. But making progress here, guys. So what we're going to do now is uh, bore this this end. We're not going to bore it all the way through. We're only going to bore about six inches deep. And we swapped out to a different boring bar. This is a shorter boring bar, so we'll have less chatter. It allows us to get in there, and we're just going to go in from this end. And uh, because it's a left-handed boring bar, 
we're actually cutting on the back side. So if you notice we're spinning the, the chuck in reverse. Uh, cuts just the same, but anyway, that's where we're at. But, well, easier uh, to say. Huh? It's easier to say. Easier from to see here. what you're doing, yeah. So uh, anyway, we're just going to, basically on this side, all I want to do is just get it to clean up through all the way around. And because of the uh, amount of material that we got to take out of there to do that, that bearing will be plenty thick enough. And again, we'll just make our, uh, we'll make our bearings match whatever it needs to be in the end. So uh, we'll measure those bores and I'll turn the bronze bushings uh, to match that for press fit, or shrink fit in this case. Ryan's got a digital readout on his uh, lathe here, so uh, this one here is basically how deep we're boring. We zeroed it out on the end, and we're going to take it six inches deep. We just zeroed out wherever we were there, just so we can see how much we're taking per cut. Uh, because this is the first pass, we just zeroed it. Uh, we wanted to, uh, we could probably put a measurement in there and match it, but in this case, I don't care what the measurement is. It's totally unimportant. Whatever it is, is what it is. And make this, uh, the bush and match it. Using the other side here. 50,000 pound that bore. Yeah, that's a 25,000 cut, 50,000 off the total diameter, and it's cutting it like butter. That's what we want. I don't hear any chatter or any bad noises. No, so far so good. So far so good. Guys, I think we got it turned out. Um, turn it around there. We uh, got it cleaned up all the way around. There's one little bit teeny tiny area on the very end, but I mean, it's so small, I'm not even going to try to make another pass. Right, right there, you can right kind of see it. Uh, it's just not worth fooling with. But uh, looks like we took a total of uh, 160 thousandths. That's on one side, so that'd be 320 thousandths total off the diameter. Uh, to get that to clean up. So that's a pretty good amount, but uh, it's done. I think we're gonna face the front of this, uh, just so that it's true to the bore. Uh, but other than that, I think we'll be done with this part. Turned out great. Let's face that out. Let's do it. Just backing up here a little bit so you guys get a scale to the size of this big uh, Monarch lathe in here. This thing is a monster. I love it. So we're just going to use the boring bar and go right across that face. That's the game plan. I think we're done turning the machine off. So uh, we got that face cleaned up pretty well. We just, this was so deep right here and here, we just said we're not even gonna try to turn all that out. We got a good surface all the way around. We've got a good bore in there on both sides. Uh, we can go home now and make some bushings for this thing. I think it's gonna be good. What do you think, Brian? I think it ought to work. Should be at least another hundred years worth anyway. I'll be long gone after that, so they won't be able to come back to me with so, it. So <laughs> now I won't be able to come back to me either. But maybe this machine will still be around. I hope so. so I hope my, so. My, most of these monarchs have outlived several owners by this point in time. I always think about that with my one up there in the shop from World War II. So probably at least three generations of machinists have run that thing that it's outlived so far, and it's still going strong. Still going strong. That's um, what it's all about. Leaving a legacy. When machines were built to be last forever, that's what we want. All right, guys, uh, I think that's going to be a wrap. We'll take this back into the shop and uh, back home and finish this thing up in another video, making some bushings and pressing them in. But I think we're good to go. And uh, I'm happy that's turned out. Brian, appreciate your help. So. Guys, that's going to be it. We'll catch you on the next video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments appreciated. Hit the bell icon for notifications. All the good stuff we say in all the videos. But uh, 
with that, we'll sign off. As always, guys, thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you later.